Hey guys, welcome to Guardian Anime. Uh, today I'll be talking about anime suffixes. Uh, you know, basically the things that people use in Japanese when addressing somebody else, like uh, san, sama, kun, chan, tan, or various others. There are really quite a lot of different suffixes and uh, some of them are not really used anymore in real life but uh, still occur in anime. So I think I'll be discussing perhaps the most commonly seen ones. Okay, so since there, there is a ton of suffixes really, uh, I'll just start with the most common one that you definitely need in real life. And that is of course San. San is, uh, you know, your generic polite address uh, towards anyone you don't know or maybe some superior at work or a colleague or whoever else. Usually it's used between people who are not very well acquainted. Maybe you've just met them or maybe you've known them for a while, but the relations are kind of formal. You're not really friends with them or even you, you could be considering yourself sort of friends, but you're not close friends. So that would still be sun. And especially in the relationship between uh, a guy and a girl or man and woman, unless they know each other really well, the man will definitely be using sun. And it can sometimes happen in, in work, uh, in a work environment that women omit it or just you know kind of behave in a slightly more informal fashion but uh, in practice sun is usually used uh, pretty much everywhere and in all situations uh, in fact uh, one one interesting um, aspect of using sun is that for example if you have a friend and if you're really on first name basis with them you've known them for, for a long time then using san with their name like Shota-san or whatever or Reina-san it can in a certain uh, in a certain situation sound sarcastic so you're basically saying yeah Mr. and Mr. John or <laughs> Mr. Bob or whatever so it, it kind of sounds you know you're you're slightly making fun of them by using that and uh, usually son is attached to the last name of the person you are addressing because um, that's the regular polite way of, of talking to people but if you know the people if you know the person a little bit better it, you can be using their first name and still be using son with that that's a kind of a slightly more informal way of addressing them which is however still polite to omit everything and just call people by their first name is really a very kind of informal way of uh, addressing people in Japan and it's not uh, something that you do right away. This is often made fun in anime, made fun of in anime because when for example some kind of uh, girl or whatever addresses a guy calling him with his first name without son, without anything, it's it makes kind of a jump in their relationship. So it goes from being relatively informal to, be, to being very formal in a jump. And this is something that Japanese people are often not very comfortable with. An exception being to that is probably uh, Japanese people who have been abroad for a long period of time. So guys who have studied abroad or something like that, they're usually very casual. So they go from, uh, I don't know, Kawamori-san to just uh, uh, Taro or whatever very quickly so but it's not common in japan itself and especially with japanese who have not been out of the country very much a rather peculiar way of using the sun suffix is actually between husband and wife this can this is, can be done in some married couple relationships where the wife addresses the husband with son so uh, i think in uh, hikaru no go the toya meijin and his wife couple basically the wife addresses him i forgot his first name whatever son ah koya toya koyo koyo san or whatever that kind of address is really it's kind of old-fashioned i think um, at least I have I have not seen this in real life it can actually happen and that's pretty interesting because I mean <laughs> in most Western languages you don't really expect uh, the wife to address the husband as like Mr. John <laughs> it's kind of funny but well that's Japan for you I mean in Japan everything is super polite the whole system is really built on politeness on of many levels so uh, 
Yeah, another really super mainstream suffix that you see in anime all over the place is uh, chan. Chan is probably derived from san, more or less, in, in linguistic terms. Uh, this is a more diminutive form used towards really very young people. Even in an adult environment between college students or friends can be used uh, in a slightly ironically condescending way, like makoto-chan or whatever. It's kind of, you know, it's, there is a, always a hint of a joke about it. I mean, usually people don't. Uh, address each other with chan except for girls girls do this girls do this uh, pretty much seriously so without without an ironic undertone only until until a certain age i mean maybe after the age of 20 something they don't do it anymore so much at least from my experience perhaps perhaps 30 somethings also also use it the girls for example when when talking to children or small children, it's a commonly used thing even by relatively old people. Interestingly enough, when a guy is addressing a girl, the formal way would be, of course, with son. The somewhat less formal way would be just omitting the suffix and just using her last name. The next more informal way would be using her first name with Chan. A very a kind of strangely rude way would be to use her last name with Chan because that's that's not how how you commonly address people that's that has kind of a sarcastic sound to it like you know kawamura chan ayanami chan <laughs> i can see kawamura chan being a little bit offended by that so <laughs> if you don't know her real well okay the, the next one is using her first name with chang then the the final really close way is just using her first name with, without anything reina or i don't know Aya or whatever. So that is the hierarchy of the suffixes in this case. And guys use the suffix towards girls. Uh, in many cases, it's um, it has a slightly comical and not so serious or romantic undertone, especially in anime. There are lots of slightly bastardized versions of this. For example, the one that uh, Sanji uses in One Piece towards Nami. It's not even cha anymore. It's chua or something. So that's that's kind of unique. It's not really a, a real thing. Tan suffix, which is also derived from Chan, basically, is yet another kind of bastardized version of, of Chan, basically based on the pronunciation of Chan by a small child, who usually can't really pronounce all that well, so they kind of make it Chan, and then it goes into Tan. This has become a kind of a fad among otaku, or basically, yeah, adult guys, girls, whatever. Usually it's used for mascot characters, as probably many of you know. I mean, there is like Windows, 95 tongue or whatever or mac os tongue within the otaku community it refers to like every bishoujo or many seiyu or whatever and there there is tongues like for north korea tongue <laughs> basically it's it's kind of an uh, anthropomorphized uh, version of uh, some kind of mascot don't use it with real people with real people it's really very rude you can perhaps do it with people you know real well but uh, no <laughs> no <laughs> while chang is usually used by females or towards females analog of this for guys is typically ku, cool, which is used both between boys for example in schools and to an extent also by college or university students but Less so, because usually the relations there are not really that intimate and the kun suffix is also kind of, you know, slightly adolescent. It doesn't really have, between people of equal standing, it doesn't really have the right kind of sound. Typically, even uh, high school boys who, who are kind of cool, are like ore, basically, you know, behaving as an adult, they'll usually not use it towards equal people. They'll just say last name or son. However, there is a, another situation where kun is very commonly used, and that is by people of high authority talking down towards people of low authority. So a senpai high relationship, maybe slightly not so polite, but for example, uh, between a professor and a student, uh, that is kind of standard. And uh, in this case, the kun suffix is also used towards girls and women. For example, in Minamike, there is a TV series uh, Sensei to Ninomiyakun. Ninomiyakun is a female student of Sensei, though they are in a kind of romantic relationship. The Sensei always addresses her Ninomiyakun. <laughs> 
It's a kind of slightly weird address towards women. You gotta know real well why and when you're using it. So if you're a foreigner, don't address women with con. <laughs> That's not a good idea. The problem is it can be misinterpreted as sarcasm, as impoliteness, as outright rudeness in some cases, or basically as, you know, arrogance. It's better not to use it unless you know really well what you're doing. Another suffix that's pretty common in anime and also relatively common in real life uh, is sama. Sama is a really more polite suffix and usually it is not, not usually, it's always not in equal relationships but in a relationship where you are much lower than the person you're addressing. In history it, it would be someone like, you know, a king or a noble and if you're a peasant you would address him like oh, Osama, Osama, whatever Sama. The one place or the one area where this suffix has uh, has been preserved until today is uh, basically the service industry, uh, where there is a saying in Japanese, okyakusama wa kamisama Basically, the customer is the king, literally. In this case, sometimes, basically, you'll be called sama. The, basically, the word for customer or client is okyakusama. The polite version. You can also say okyaksan, but okyaksama uh, is the really polite version. Yeah, in a, in a really formal conversation this can work. Otherwise, if you are using it in a kind of situation where there is no such big distance in standing, probably going to be interpreted as sarcasm or irony. So <laughs> Probably in such a situation, it's, it's, it's better not to use it. So in real life, as a foreigner, you, you're probably never going to meet Sama. Similarly, the Dono suffix carries a kind of a historical relevance mostly. Uh, and it was basically used between figures of authority, noblemen, which were, who were kind of more or less on the same level. So you can kind of hear in all those samurai anime, I don't know, Mifune Dono, Yoshitsune Dono, whatever, something Dono, Nobunaga Dono. That was a common way to address noble people or samurai in whatever era, like 150 years ago. Today, I don't think it's used anywhere, except perhaps the otaku community. The otaku, otaku community still uses it. And you can, you can uh, hear a very nice example of that in... Uh, Kobayashi, Kobayashi Sanchi no Maito Dragon, where Takia addresses Fafni as Fafni Dono. <laughs> it's kind of funny because, uh, you know, the otaku guys, they're not exactly samurai, but they kind of appropriate the way of speech of samurai. It's all kind of sort of a joking way to, to talk to each other. Now, the suffixes that I've talked about so far were basically universal ones that can be used between any two people. But other than those, uh, in Japanese you also have the suffixes which can be used towards family. And here you have also a ton of different versions. So, for example, siblings can address each other Onisan, Onesan, Onichan, Onechan, Aniki, lots more bastardized versions of all that. Um, and of course also Okasama, Otosama, Oyaji. Oyaji would be, for example, a kind of, kind of a rude way to address your father. Perhaps in a situation where, where the son is already a really grown-up guy, maybe 30-something, and the father is, of course, uh, also older. In such a situation, it's probably okay for, for a guy to call his father Oyaji. And an example where this, is, uh, this takes place is in Initial D, where uh, Takumi calls his father Bunta Oyaji. A really super rude form is Kso Oyaji, you know, shit dad, or don't, don't use that ever. <laughs> The really more normal or polite way is, of course, to say Otosan or Otosan. Tochan would be kind of very gentle, or Kachan. Kachan would typically be used by small, uh, smaller children. Hahawe, Chichue would be more formal variations. You see this way of addressing people mostly in historical uh, context. There are quite a few more uh, nuances here. So, for example, in, uh, in Yakuza speak, the common way of addressing your gang senpai would be by aniki. This, this can be seen in a lot of Yakuza related games or Yakuza related anime. For example, in Great Teacher Onizuka, I think this was the case. In some 
context, Anikit address is also kind of used a bit inappropriately, even if the uh, person who is using it is not blood related. So for example, in Aganai, Boku wa tomodachi ga sukunai, the way Osaka is addressed by the really girly guy, I forgot his name again, it's Aniki, although they're of course not related, basically the, you know, the crossdresser guy, he just likes uh, the whole setting of gang membership and you know bonds and whatever so he's using aniki towards kosaka which is a little bit strange i mean in real life you don't you won't really hear this at all another typical example of the use of aniki in a non-related situation includes hangen topa gurin lagan series of which you can see the autographs of most of the staff on my right including the yoko character designer nishigori atsushi in lagan uh, the young simon addresses kamina as aniki because he, is, he looks up to him and yeah the analogous to some extent relation between girls is ne sama so if a girl usually a teenager girl is like idolizing some kind of older girl she'll address her as ne sama okay some two slightly less common variations on the ni sama uh, or nisan suffix is ni tama or ne tama which is again a variation used mostly by really small children um, because they can't really pronounce the cha chan or san all that clearly so their t is more or less a childish version of the pronunciation the one example where all kinds of uh, bastardized ni chan suffixes are used is in sister princess where the protagonist has like 12 younger sisters moto and they all call him differently so even even that that is possible in japanese so you have really lots of versions and actually the choice of suffix it kind of indicates the kind of relationship that uh, uh, the, the people have same as as with the formal suffixes in this case it's also like that so for example an aniki suff suffix or address something totally different than onitama onitama is basically like a three-year-old talking to a 15 year old and Aniki is more 14 year old talking to an 18 year old something like that well actually the as probably everyone knows the uh, addresses of Onisan, Onesan, Onisha, Onechan they're used by smaller children to talk to basically every guy maybe between 15 and 25 or maybe 20. You can <laughs> actually you can often see in anime that when some kind of relatively young child who, who doesn't really have an idea of the age of the person he's talking to is addressing him as Obacha or Ojisa and the guy is like 20 and he is like what did you call me? <laughs> Especially the girls uh, when they address Obacha. Obacha is basically auntie. So when a girl is like 20, 22 or whatever and she's addressed Obacha <laughs> she tends to be like so you gotta you gotta have the doubt. Okay, so that's it for the most commonly used anime suffixes. I could do probably a couple more videos on this because in Japanese there are really so many nuances and so many small kinds of things that you can you should pay attention when when speaking. Of course, it depends on on the interest. So if people want to see, it, then I'll do a couple more videos. But uh, for now, basically that's it. Thanks for watching. If you liked it, please subscribe, press the like button, leave your feedback in the comments, and see you next time. Arigatou gozaimasu. Mata ne.